Just turn to someone and greet them and say, we were made to thrive. Amen. Let me take this opportunity to welcome you to the Praise Center. We are so delighted that you're here. We have many guests here today. A lot of them are here for our baby Jews dedication, and we're so glad that you all are here. So make them welcome. Amen. And we have other guests, I'm sure, as well. So we are glad that you are here, and hopefully you received a folder when you came in, a welcome packet. If you did not, would you raise your hand so we can make sure you have one with you? We need one right here. Thank you so much. And inside that folder, there is a card, an information card. It would be so nice if I could have that back filled out. It would give me the opportunity to know a little bit more about you and respond. 
to you being with us today. We are delighted that you're here in the presence of God with us. He is here, amen? God is here. And while we welcome each of you as our guest here to the Praise Center, I want you all to help me welcome him. Welcome him into our lives. Welcome him into this service today. Will you help me do that? Lord, we welcome you right now. We welcome you into this place, Lord, into our hearts, into our lives, into our minds, into our bodies. We welcome your presence. Lord, in your presence, we can be transformed and changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. We can be changed by your presence. So, Lord, let that be the day. Let this be the day that someone comes to know you as Lord of their life. Let this be the day, Lord, that others are set free by your spirit to shine, to thrive, to be the body of Christ that you've called us to be. Lord, I pray for needs to be met in this place today. As you inhabit the praises of your people, Lord, I thank you that bodies can be healed, that minds can be restored, that spirits can be renewed. Lord, I thank you that you're the God of reconciliation and restoration and that relationships can be healed in your presence. So, Lord, I just thank you and praise you for this day, for your presence in this place. And, Lord, we thank you and we praise you for the privilege of worshiping you in spirit and in truth. Lord, there's people around this world that are not given that liberty or not given that freedom. They're hiding. They're in secret places. They're, they're in places trying to do the best they can to worship you without being caught. And, Lord, here we are in a free land. Here we are in a free place. We can worship you with no restrictions or no restraints. So, Lord, help us. Help us, Lord, to shake off the things of the world. Help us to shake off the burdens. And, Lord, let us lift our hearts and our voices and our hands to you and magnify the name above all names, Jesus, our God, our Lord, our Savior. And we praise you and thank you for this privilege. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. It is time to worship the Lord today with giving, and we're going to bring our tithes and offerings into the storehouse. <coughs> praise the Lord. We're going to make our... Uh, declaration and if you fill out that card in your welcome packet this will be the time for you to hand it in you can just hand it to the ushers or put it in the bag as they're coming by that would be just awesome again it would give me the privilege to respond to you again thank you for being here today you're ready to worship the lord in our giving let's do it i am a worshiper i was created by god to worship therefore as an act of worship i bring my tithes and offerings into your storehouse Based upon your word, I know I will be blessed, although that is not the reason I give. I give with a grateful heart because I love you and I want to honor you by obeying your word as an expression of my faith. I trust you to open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room for it. I trust you to rebuke the devourer for my sake and to protect my finances. I trust you to honor your word and save my whole family they may serve you and walk in health and abundance. As you bless me, I will bless others and give freely as you direct me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Brett's going to come with our announcements. In the meantime, if you need a harvest slip, let someone know they'll get one of those to you, and in just a moment we'll collect those and we'll pray for our harvest. Brett? All right. Well, good morning, church. No, really, I said good morning. Today is the day that God has made. Amen. What an awesome day it is to worship together. Amen. Y'all know it's a blessing to do that. The more you worship freely, the more God blesses you because he inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. All right. Well, I'm going to go fast and furious because I want to get back to worshiping. Is that good enough for y'all? So here we go. All right. The pastor will be meeting with his prayer partners for lunch on Sunday, May the 4th, following the morning worship service. If you are currently one of the pastor's prayer partners, you need to be there. And if you would like to know more about this ministry, please sign up at the hospitality desk, which is out in the foyer toward the front entrance. Also, if you plan on attending, you need to sign up so we know how much food to prepare. But all of us should be there. Right? Okay, cool. Um, if you need more information, you can contact Jack or Belinda Purpal. And my note says, have us wave. Would y'all wave? There's Belinda. And Jack's probably doing something. Oh, no, he's over there. There he is. Couldn't see him. So see them if you're interested after you sign up at the hospitality desk. All right. Faith in Serving Humanity, also known as FISH, is a local outreach ministry serving those in need here in Walton County. Many of the local churches um, financially and spiritually support this ministry, including the Praise Center. In fact, our pastor is a founding board member of the FISH. And this ministry reaches out to the underprivileged children here in Walton County every summer through a program called Fish for Kids. 
Many of you are familiar with that because we support that greatly. This program delivers bagged lunches to those children each weekday during their summer vacation because most of these children are in the free lunch program, and during the summer, they just don't eat. So we provide them with a free lunch, and uh, we do that <clears throat> every year, and it's awesome. And this year, it begins on May the 19th, and the Praise Center will again provide volunteers to make lunches and deliver them every Tuesday. Although you can volunteer any day of the week, but our church is going together on, the, on Tuesdays. And so if you are planning to volunteer or you'd like to know more, please contact Rick Baker. And uh, Rick, would you wave? That's Rick. He'll be coordinating that this year for the Praise Center. So please see him, and he'll give you all the details you need for that. But it begins on May the 19th. All right. Our Women of Praise is having a luncheon. And the theme is Pearls of Grace. It is $7 per lady. Please sign up at the hospitality desk. And I don't see a date. So May the 17th. And a time? 11.30. May 17th at 11.30. So Women of Praise, Pearls of Grace Luncheon, $7 per lady. Please sign up. So again, they know. And the lady said... Hey, just so you ladies want to know how that's done, watch this. Hey, men of God, where are we at? <laughs> Very cool. Okay, moving right along. Michael Boggs is a songwriter and performer who serves as a worship leader at a church in Brentwood, Tennessee. He was a part of one of our Freedom Fest outreach events several years ago and is coming back again this July 4th as part of the release of a new album on which he includes the title song, What Would Jesus Undo? Michael is partnering with communities where churches are working together. Monroe is one of those communities. Michael had an undo weekend here this weekend. Uh, the goal of the undo weekend was to catch a picture of God's church in action. Uh, various events took place this weekend demonstrating the local churches working together. And this evening, it culminates with a concert with Michael Boggs live at the Lighthouse World Outreach with the whole church community invited. And we believe that is at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Lighthouse, Michael Boggs in concert. Good deal. All right. Our current life group semester has ended, and the groups will be taking a break for the month of April. That break's almost over. It will be, the new semester starts in just a few days in May. The sign-up sheets are in the hallway posted, and if you plan on participating in a small group or a life group, you need to sign up. And let me just tell you, life groups are where it's at. Life groups are where it's at. Life groups are where it's at. That's how we grow. That's how we build. That's how we bond. That's how we express ourselves in small groups, in safe environments. Amen? So everybody that's planning on joining a life group or participating in a life group, make sure you sign up and get involved. All right. Just a reminder, the pastor's Bible study classes will not be meeting this week because he is attending the Assembly of God Georgia District Council. Uh, we will be sta still be having our dinner. Is it? What? Ugh. We will still be having dinner on Wednesday, some awesome praise and worship, and all the youth and kids groups will still be meeting. So still come out on Wednesday. Okay, and just in case you didn't know, we did not participate in Grace and Days Festival. And so we postponed all that, and we're going to take all our love and, and water and support and nurturing for the community, and we're going to pour it out on May the 10th at the, at the Downtown Monroe Kids Festival. We will get more information to you very soon on how to participate and be involved with that. We'll have the bounce house and kids' activities and lots of water because you guys were awesome and donating money for water, so that was great. That's it. Thank you, Brett. If you have your harvest slips filled out, it'd be the time to hold them up right now and let us collect those so we can pray for the harvest. There's some there. There's some over here. Thank you, gentlemen. For those of you who are our guests, we pray for souls to be saved every Sunday. This is our harvest basket. We have slips of paper that we call harvest slips that we write the names of people that we want to see come to know Jesus Christ, our loved ones, our family, our co-workers, whoever God lays upon our heart. We write their names on these slips called harvest slips, and then we add them to our harvest basket, and we pray for the will of God to be done. How many of you know it's the will of God for these to be saved? Amen. So we can pray according to his will, knowing what his will is. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance and salvation. So join me in agreement, if you would, and let's pray for our harvest. Lord, we thank you that you are the Lord of the harvest. 
And Lord, you told us in your word to pray, therefore, to the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into the fields that are white. So Lord, send us. Send us. Send us with an anointing. Send us with a boldness and a courage. Send us, Lord, with faith that what we share will be good seed and that others can water and that, Lord, you would bring that increase about. That, Lord, you would save these that we've placed in this basket they would come to know you as Lord. They would call upon your name and be saved. Lord, we ask this in the strong, powerful name of Jesus. And all of God's people said, amen and amen. God bless you. A couple of weeks ago, you saw two presentations, one by Lindsay Vickery and the other by our drama team. And the purpose of fine arts in the Assemblies of God is to train young people grades 6 through 12, and then also to keep training them through age 23 for um, how to use their, their talents in the kingdom of God and how to hone their gifts. And today you're going to see Gunnar Gooch's presentation, and you're going to see Taylor Gooch's presentation. They were both just simply awesome when we were down for the festival, and I know that you're going to enjoy what they are bringing you this morning. So um, the percussion has a criteria that they are judged on. You ready, Gunner? Okay. And um, Gunner did great. He got a lot of good, good comments on his adjudicator sheet. So um, Taylor, if you'll just be ready, honey, come on up when Gunner's done. And so church, just enjoy what you're going to be hearing full time in the next few years.
gonna dwell on who you I just want to wait on you, my guide. I just want to dwell on who you are. Amen. God is good, and he continually blesses us through those who are answering his call to use their gifts for his glory. Praise God for that. Praise the Lord for that. In case you can't tell, this is a beaming grandpa. <laughs> Trying not to take advantage of that too much. Praise God. You know,
know, being a pastor is quite an honor. three generations of all being here praise him yesterday we were able to have a home going ceremony for Trish and him now today we are dedicating new life within 24 hours this pastor has stood in this pulpit and celebrated the home going of one of our dear loved ones and now we have the privilege of dedicating new life that's the rewards I'm talking about, of being able to pastor a congregation and have an intricate part of the life from birth to glory. At this time, we're going to ask uh, Kenneth and Bindi to present Jude, Brian, Averett, and then I'm going to ask their family to come with them, uh, which we have a great representation from the family here. We have grandparents, great-grandparents both sides, four generations here. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. In just a moment, I will ask you as a congregation a question and your appropriate response will be, we do. So I'm letting you know what your response will be. Awesome. It says, And when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. We're talking of Jesus here. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him, and inspired by the Holy Spirit, he came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms, and he blessed God. Do you, as the body of Christ, receive this child in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and promise to be unto him a father, mother, brother, sister, and friend? Kenneth and Bindi. In the sight of God and in the presence of these witnesses, do you solemnly undertake to bring up this child in the fear and the admonition of the Lord? Will you, Kenneth and Bendy, seek to lead you to accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord early in his life and promise that you will train him in body, mind, and spirit for the service and fellowship with God? Lord, we thank you for this precious gift of life. We thank you for this family and the support that they show for Kenneth and Bindi as they have vowed before this church and before you that they will train Jude to come to know you soon and early, that they will train him in body, mind, and spirit to serve you. And so, Lord, we pray your protection over him. We pray that, Lord, you would guard his heart and his mind and his body that he indeed would be a servant of yours to bring glory and honor to your name. We dedicate these parents, we dedicate ourselves, and we dedicate this child to you, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. If you would stay here just for a second. We want to present you with this copy of this service that we just did for him, and also... We would like for you to have a certificate of dedication for Jude Brian Averett. We ded was dedicated to the Lord Jesus Christ on the 27th day of April, 2014. And we'd also like to be able to give baby Jude his first Bible. This says, this New Testament is presented to Jude Brian Averett on April 27, 2014 at the Praise Center by Pastor Russell Davis.
God bless y'all. Praise the Lord. What a beautiful family. What a beautiful family. Amen. Thank you all so much for coming and supporting Kenneth and Benny. I know it means the world to them that you're here. What a precious, precious sight to see four generations in church. Amen. Praise God. All right, worship team. Take us back into the presence of God, and then I'm going to come preach. I do have to say I am one proud mama.
be seated in his presence. We have people around us that serve us, that are part of our ministry, that are given opportunities at times to speak and to minister and to be used of God in other places. Our worship team has gone to other places. People within our congregation that have a calling upon their lives are invited at times to speak and do things. And so we have this privilege today. Sister Hope is going to New York to be at Calvary Church in New York to minister in the next couple of weeks. And so we want to pray over her and send her with the blessing of this church and the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, so, Miss Hope, would you please come? And if our leadership would come. Doug, if you could hear me and come. Praise God. Please pray with us. Lord, we thank you for Sister Hope, her calling on her life, that she's given herself to you fully and completely for all these years to be your servant, to be your daughter, to be a voice, to be a spokesperson for your truth and for your glory. And Lord, as you have opened this door for her to go to New York and to minister at Calvary Church, Lord, we pray your blessings, that you would go before her that you would open the hearts and the minds of those she'll be speaking to and ministering to, that, Lord, your word would go forth with an anointing and with a power, the supernatural seed of your word that would produce much fruit, and that, Lord, you would protect her as she travels, you would go with her, guard her, and that, Lord, you would not allow any of the word that she shares from your word to return void, but it would, re that it would produce much fruit in Jesus' name. Use her, anoint her, bless her in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it. 
And we look forward, Lord, to her return with testimonies of your grace and your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I know you've stood a lot, but I just would like for you to stand in one more time in honor of God's Word as we read God's Word together from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7 through 18. Let's read it together. Now if the ministry that brought death, which was engraved in letters of stone, came with glory, so that the Israelites could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of its glory, fading though it was, Will not the ministry of the Spirit be even more glorious? If the ministry that condemns men is glorious, how much more glorious is the ministry that brings righteousness? For what was glorious has no glory now in comparison with the surpassing glory. And if what was fading away came with glory, how much greater is the glory of that which lasts? Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We are not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face to keep the Israelites from gazing at it while the radiance was fading away. But their minds were made dull, for to this day the same veil remains when the Old Covenant is read. It has not been removed, because only in Christ is it taken away. Even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into His likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. May the Lord add His blessing to His Word. This is part two in a series that we began last week. If you were not here last week, those messages are available on DVD or CD, or you can go to our website, thepraisecenter.net, and click on the link to YouTube there and see them. Those services are listed, posted there, thanks to our sound tech group back there who do an awesome job of taking care of us every week. And thanks to Darren for posting those things quickly on the site so those can see it. Amen. We do appreciate all that you guys do and girls that you do for us. We learned last week that our hearts are good. That God has circumcised our old hearts unto himself through the cross and that through the resurrection he has given us a new heart. We had that exchange last week. We took our hearts of stone and laid them down, and we picked up our new hearts and symbolism of receiving that, and hopefully you still have that little token with you as a reminder of the fact that God has taken away your heart of stone, and he has given you a new heart. But not only does Christ say that you and I have new hearts, and not only does he say that our hearts are good, but he invites us out of the shadows to reveal our glory. We have a glory that needs to be revealed. You have a role in the plans and the purposes of God that you never dreamed of having. We are in the process of being unveiled, or we are in the process of being revealed, ever how you want to put it. God saved us for a purpose. We have a destiny. We have a reason. He didn't just save us so that we could sit back and wait till one day he calls and calls us home. While we are here, we are to reflect his glory. While we're here, we are to shine like stars. We have been created to reflect God's glory, to bear his image. And he has ransomed us to reflect that glory again. So the question then is how do we bring God God glory, how can we glorify God or bring God glory when we're suffering around in the cellar weighed down with guilt and shame? Which what is what religion does. Religion continually puts us under guilt and shame and condemnation. But the word says there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. And yet so many Christians are continuously weighed down with guilt and shame and consequently are not reflecting the Lord's glory 
they're still reflecting death. They're still reflecting the law. But the Bible says the Spirit of God has set us free from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. Our destiny is to come fully alive, to live with an increasing glory. So here's the deal. Your heart bears a glory because it's God's heart. He put within you a new heart. He took away your heart of stone and he gave you a new heart and that new heart bears a glory and your glory is needed. The world needs to see God. The world needs to see Christ. The world needs to see Jesus. And we are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. We are the image bearers of God. In Romans 7, 18, Paul says, I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. Now notice the distinction that he makes there. He does not say that there's nothing good in me, period. He says nothing good is in my sinful nature. We know that. That's why it was crucified with Christ. Amen? His sinful nature, his old nature, the old life was crucified with Christ. He does not say that I'm incapable of any good. He simply says, in my sinful nature, there's nothing good. Well, we've not been called to live according to our sinful nature anymore. We've been called to live by the Spirit of God. In Romans 8, 2, he declares through Jesus Christ, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. So there's two laws at work. There's the law of sin and death, and then there's the law of the Spirit. And I've used this around here before, and some of you are well aware of it, and some of you may not have heard it before, but there's two laws that help us to illustrate this and help us to demonstrate this. There's the law of gravity. It's universal. That's why you're all seated. If the law of gravity was not here, you'd just be floating around in here, and it'd be hard to listen and pay attention. And I wouldn't be standing here. I'd be floating around in here trying to preach. That would be a sight, wouldn't it? You'd all be floating around trying to listen. But the law of gravity is universal. It doesn't make any difference how much we weigh or don't weigh. How tall or short, it's a universal law. It keeps us all grounded. But there is another law. It's called the law of aerodynamics. The law of aerodynamics overcomes the law of gravity. You take a giant airplane that's too heavy to possibly fly, but given enough speed, with enough wind velocity under the wings, and that plane will lift and begin to fly. It's called the law of aerodynam aerodynamics. Where is the law of gravity? Still in effect. But a greater law has overcame the law of gravity. The law of aerodynamics defies the law of gravity. Well, the law of life in Christ Jesus has overcome the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death is still in effect for now. But there's a greater law than the law of sin and death. It is the life in the spirit of Christ Jesus. It's a new law, a greater law than the law of sin and death. Well, he has overcome the law of sin and death, and we are with him, and we are in him. Amen. So we have to choose then to live from the new heart. It's a choice. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ who walk not after the old way, after the flesh, but after the Spirit. It's a choice. We make a choice. We choose to live from our new heart. The problem is, is our old nature doesn't go down without a fight. Some of you are very aware of that battle. I am. Philippians 2, though, tells us that we are to shine like stars so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life in order that I may boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing. Matthew's gospel tells us this, in the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. So here's the deal. 
our heart bears a glory and that glory is needed the world needs to see our good works and glorify God the world needs to see us shining like stars in this crooked and depraved world in which we've been called to live the church needs to be brighter than ever as the world gets darker those the church should get brighter the light should become brighter and brighter the darker it gets the more the light is able to be seen let's talk about this morning true humility true humility Shame says, I'm nothing to look at. I'm not capable of goodness. But humility says, I bear a glory for sure, but it's a reflected glory. It's a grace given to me. We are the bearers of His glory. We reflect His glory. It's of Him. We have this treasure in these earthen vessels that the excellency of the power might be of Him and not of us. So humility says, look, I, I have a glory, but I know where it came from. I didn't become glorious by my own deeds. I didn't become glorious by my own works. I didn't become glorious by my behavior or my attitude or my personality. Whatever glory I received was a gift of grace. It was a gift of God. Now, here's a definition, not, not a definitive definition, not the only definition, but it's my definition of humility humility is not weakness but power under God's control humility is not weakness but it's power under God's control it's having the capacity to do something and choosing not to for the glory of God that's humility having the capacity or the capability or the or the means to to do something else but choosing not to so that God is glorified like Jesus said, not my will, but thine be done. That's humility. It's real. Like Jesus could have called down angels. He could have called down 6,000 angels. He could have stopped everything in the process. But he said, no, not my will, but thine be done. He had the power to change things, but he didn't because he wanted to glorify God. That's humility. It's when we have the capacity to do something different, but we choose not to. We have the power to act in a different way, but we choose for the glory of God to say no to that and yes to God's will. Amen. That's humility. Now, here's some good news. Your story doesn't begin with sin. It begins with a glory bestowed upon you by God. Your story doesn't start in Genesis 3. It starts in Genesis 1. And you bear his image. You bear his image. You were created in the image of God. He made us in his image. So it didn't start with sin. It started with glory. It started with his image. Sin messed it up. But it didn't start there. Thank God it doesn't end there. But let's talk about his image for a second. God is glorious. Amen. God is kind. God is creative. God is valiant. God is true. God is beautiful. Taylor just sang about that. God is wise. He's all wise. He's all knowing. He's almighty. He's all powerful. God is generous. And you are his offspring. You are his child. You are his reflection. You're his likeness. You bear his image. Glory to God. You bear his image. So your story doesn't start with sin, and thank God it doesn't end with sin. It ends with glory restored. The first man, Adam, messed it up. The second man, Adam, restored what was lost. What was lost in the garden became restored in the next garden. Adam failed in the garden. Jesus succeeded in the garden. He was tempted in all points just like you and I, yet without sin. He won the victory for us even before the cross. 
The cross was the manifestation of the victory that had already taken place on the inside of Jesus when he chose, not my will, but thine be done. And for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Hallelujah. And the joy that was set before him, I continually remind myself and remind you, is us. The joy set before him was not returning to heaven. He made that. He knew he was going to there. It, the, the, the joy set before him was your salvation, your redemption, your deliverance, your glory, your being filled with his spirit, you being able to bear his image. That was the joy set before him that caused him to go to the cross and endure it knowing that on the other side of that cross was your redemption. On the other side of that cross was your resurrection. On the other side of that cross was your deliverance. On the other side of that cross was your healing. On the other side of the cross was your everything. He went there knowing that if I can go through that, there will be nothing that they can't have. He became everything that we couldn't so that we become everything that we never would have. He did it for us. And we bear his glory. Romans 8, 30 says, In those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. You've been justified. And I'm not the first to coin this, and I probably won't be the last to say it. You've heard it. To help people understand what justified means, it's just as if I'd never sinned. Just as if I'd never sinned. That's what it means to be justified. Just as if I'd never done it. Who else but God can do that? Who else but God can take our sins and throw them as far as the east is from the west? Who else but God can throw them into the sea of forgetfulness never to be remembered against us again? I want to be like God. I want to bear that image. I want to be able to say when I forgive somebody that I do, but I, I'm human. And I have to come up with better definitions for biblical forgetting. And here it is if you want to know what it is. Biblical forgetting is not the absence of thought, but it's the absence of actions based on those thoughts. Because I'm not capable of wiping the slate clean in my brain. I still have memory banks that, that remember offenses and remember hurt. But by God's grace, I can choose to forgive and I can choose to release and I can choose to let it go. But when the thought comes back, forgetting is not the absence of the thought. It's the absence of actions based on that thought. I still choose to walk by the Spirit and not the flesh. I choose not to act according to that thought. And God's grace gives us the power to do that. Hallelujah. But we've been justified just as if we've never sinned. And it says we've been glorified. Glorified. Now, you've got to hang on a minute because that's a biblical word, and that's a great-sounding word, but what in the world does it mean? What does it mean that when he says he also glorified? I want to give you the definition. It comes from a Greek word called doxio or doxazo. Doxazo. You can pronounce it ever how you want to. It's D-O-X-A-Z-O. D-O-X-A-Z-O is the Greek word. Here's what it means. To make glorious. To adorn with luster. To clothe with splendor. To render it excellent. To manifest dignity and worth. Wow. Wow. That's what God does for every single child of his who accepts by faith what Jesus did and is saved and born again. He gives us dignity and he gives us worth and he renders us excellent. He put a new heart in us and that new heart is good. Hallelujah. But the problem is a good bit of the church is under a spell. It's under a spell. If all this glory is true, then why don't I see it? Because we're under a spell. We have no idea of who we really are. We thought Christianity was about trying not to sin or going to church or being nice. Jesus says it's about the healing of your heart. It's about setting it free and restoring your glory. 
Paul said it's time to take the veil away. Jesus sees us for who we really are. Take James and John. They may look like fishermen out of work, but he sees them as sons of thunder. Take Gideon. He may look like a coward hiding in a wine cellar, but God sees him as a mighty man of valor. David may look like a scrawny little kid on the backside of the desert keeping a few sheep, but God sees him as a giant slayer who will become a king. Take Peter. He may look like a denier who failed the test, but Jesus sees him as the shepherd of the sheep and the father of the church. Well, glory to God. Quit letting your past define you. Quit letting the world define you. Quit letting circumstances define you. And let God define you. You are who you are in Christ Jesus. You've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And it's time for our hearts to reflect the glory of God that he has bestowed upon us. He has not called us to walk in guilt and condemnation and shame. We once were lost. Now we're found. We once had a heart of stone. Now we have a new heart. It's time to let the new heart come out. It's time to shine. Hallelujah. You have a glory to bear. And it's time to shine. It's time to come out of hiding and become all that God's called us to be. Amen. I need the worship team to come. And I've been throwing curveballs all morning at them. And I'm going to call one more shot. I want you to go back and sing that song, Thrive, instead of what was down here. I want, I want you to do Thrive again. We've been called to thrive. Amen. We've been called beyond ordinary lives. We've been called not to just survive, but to thrive. Hallelujah. 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 Is this it? <laughs> I'm trying to find it for you. That's the one. That's the one. <clears throat> Hallelujah. How many of you are ready to shine? Ready to thrive? As they begin to sing and lead us back into worship in God through music, I want to invite any of you here that are still under that load, that are still under that, that false sense of guilt and condemnation and unworthiness. And I want to invite you to come today. I'm going to invite you to come today and let God set you free. Let God set your heart free to shine. Would you stand with us?
just come. I was thinking about it again through the fourth part of that. And I just believe there's several of you that just need to break loose today from that ordinary and begin to thrive where God's called you to. Go ahead. Do not. survivors to thrivers. He's taken us from survivors to thrivers. By his grace, by his mercy, by his power, we are no longer survivors. We are thrivers. We were made to thrive. 
This church was made to thrive. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Anything is possible. bear his glory everywhere you go. Amen. <laughs>